Welcome to Cadence Rose. I'm Rose, and today we are joined by a very special guest. Hi, my name is Bridget, the owner of Black Hands Artisan Soap. So today we're going to be doing a soap making collaboration. We're going to be making a amethyst salt bar. We're going to be making the soap, but this will be mostly just a nice chatty video. I'm going to go ahead and pour rhubarb infusion in here, and then I will we'll get into the questions. What made you want to start making soap? So in 2018, mm -hmm. well in 2017 I had my daughter, 2018 she was diagnosed with eczema mm -hmm. and my doctor said, oh just give her some breast milk on her skin and I thought that was kind of yucky, it was yes. sticky, so I read somewhere that you can put it in soap and use it on them, so that's what I did, I started making soap just for her, it wasn't a lot, just a little bit here and there just so I can clean her skin with it and clear mm -hmm. her eczema, so it worked out nice. And I really enjoyed it because it was therapeutic for me. Yeah, babies already, like, they throw up on themselves and stuff and you don't yeah. want to, more stickiness is it? Not? No, no, I didn't. Because then her skin would, like, I tried putting it on and her skin would feel sticky. Mm -hmm. And the milk didn't feel sticky on my hands, but for some reason it felt sticky on her skin. And I say, she must not like this because I don't like it. Add the coconut milk. And what brand of coconut milk do you get? Brand off of... Amazon, I think, okay. just pure powdered coconut milk. Because yeah, I get my um, coconut milk from Walmart, that Goya brand, mm -hmm. and I just get the liquid form. I've never tried the powder, so that should be nice. We like using coconut milk in our soaps. It makes the lather creamy. Yeah, I do that with the goat milk. I have goat milk powder because where I live, they don't sell goat milk in liquid form. So I've had to use the powder, which I like better because when you're doing milk soaps, there's so many like extra rules and things that you have to follow. You don't want it to overheat and with the powder you don't have to worry about that. We've done it both both ways with the milk and the powder and the milk is much harder because you have to freeze it and you have to be slow and right. overheating and discoloration and all of that. Yes, yes. Because that's happened to me where it's discolored and I'm like what happened? Because it's such a pretty color when you're pouring it like this mm -hmm. almost whitish color. I had a, it's actually like my pumpkin spice bar because then I put in, um, was it rose clay and uh, brick red clay and after about two weeks of curing it was brown. <laughs> Like the red and the rose clay, they both turned brown. And I was like, this was not what I was going for at all. We've had that a lot with different colorants, especially messing with natural stuff. We went through multiple soaps going through trying to find like a get a blue color with indigo. One time we had a soap and we unmolded it and it was like a beautiful green, bright green and bright blue color. And then after the next few weeks, it turned like a very light purple and brown. Oh, wow. And it was just like, that's annoying. But I hate when it turns brown. That's just not yeah. what I was going for. The other colors are fine, but why is it turning brown? Next question. How did your first soap making experience go? So I went on Brambleberry because I'm self-taught. So I used a lot of Brambleberry, Soap Queen, website, blogs. And they had Old Faithful with a mm -hmm. twist. So I did the Old Faithful with a twist recipe and I read a lot about when you add essential oils it could speed up trace mm -hmm. so you have to be quick and you add it at the end and so I really wanted to use peppermint essential oil so when I everything was going really well I was following the direction I had the, the video up of uh, Anne Marie making it so I was like this is going to be perfect it's going to be the first perfect batch and I put the essential oil in there and in my, in my head I was thinking okay it's going to speed up trace. So I literally just stirred like one time like that <laughs> and I immediately poured it in the mold and I was like oh this is so pretty it's going to be perfect and then maybe like 20 minutes later I went back to check on it because I was like obsessed about it and I saw oil going to the top and I was like what's going on like did I not mix properly? And then um, I went, I was like, let me go back to Soap Queen, figure this out. So I did like her troubleshooting questions and I was like, well, you probably didn't mix the fragrance right. And I said, that's probably right because I just did a little swirl, that was it. And so then she had the hot process hero. Mm -hmm. So then I made cold process and hot process soap at the first, for the first time together. Cause then I switched it, I took it out the mold, put it in the pot, cooked it to make a hot process soap. Came out fine, no issues. I was still able to use it. But it didn't have that smooth, cold process look. It was all rustic. That's pretty interesting, doing hot process for one of your first soaps. We, we didn't do hot process for a minute after we started just because it's kind of 
once you get comfortable it's but yeah that's cool. you know you start well you have to learn the hard way sometimes but at least you know. i was able to save it and that's what was important to me i said at least because i was over adventures i got mm -hmm. like a three pound mo and i was like i'm gonna make all this soap and then <laughs> when i saw that oil i said wow all that money gone down the drain what can i do to fix this so i was happy that i found the hot process hero mm -hmm. and that i was able to follow directions and get it done and it, it worked out fine now that we have our some of the additives in the oils i'm going to pour my light in of course when you make soap you always have to have life safety gear gloves and long sleeve shirts and stuff like that so put this on and we're going to pour this and you pour it over your spatula as well mm -hmm. yeah that's always good to prevent some of those air bubbles i love the color yeah and it'll turn that red once it starts to mix with the lye that's one thing with infusions when you make the infusions you're like what why is it yellow or why is it this color and then it makes it look very different in the soap i so. like this red it's really pretty and so when you mold it i mean when you um unmold it it'll still well now it's turning like a pinkish color yeah but we're gonna add the indigo so hopefully because we want this to be a, purple, be a nice right? purple so yeah what made you want to sell your products I just had so much of it <laughs> and I didn't know what to do because I really enjoy like pouring soap mm -hmm. and texturizing it. It was just therapy for me. It was like mm -hmm. an escape for me. And so I was making soap. I would make like two to three loaves every Saturday. It just became too many. Like I didn't have enough space to store it. And my husband was like, well, you got to get rid of some of the soap. So I started giving some away, but that wasn't, I still had a lot left over and I was still making soap even though I had ordered from Soper's Choice like I was a business. <laughs> I had ordered the 10 pounds of everything. I was like, well, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need that. And I wasn't even a business, but mm -hmm. I was just so excited about it that I ordered all this material and I said, well, I got to do something with it. Mm -hmm. So I decided to sell it. Well, at least you can start making a business out of something that you actually like and you right. know, it's therapeutic, like you said. So that's lambling and lavender. It smells really good. Mm -hmm. Where do you get your essential oils from? New Directions Aromatics, because they have the um, all of the usage rate charts and stuff like that. If you want to make sure you're doing the right stuff, that was one of the reasons why I was ordering all of my stuff from Brambleberry, even mm -hmm. though they're more on the expensive side. They had the fragrance calculator where it did the essential oils and the fragrance. I liked that it had the instructions on mm -hmm. well, this behaves well, this doesn't, this coloration, just all the details. Yeah, I really. As, you know, as a new, as a first time soap maker, it was nice to have access to all of that stuff. Because that's one thing with soap making, there are so many different variables and if you can get as much information as possible before you even make it. Right, exactly. Yeah, make as little mistakes as possible. This stuff does cost a lot and mm -hmm. you want it to come out nice because I've had a few batches that even after practice didn't go well. My first milk soap bar did not go well at all and I still can't even tell you what happened because I really don't know i made a video a few weeks ago of like that charcoal soap the soap fail yeah i remember that one uh, we've had seasons before and we know how to like vent them and to go slow but sometimes you just in uh use something and it just messes your stuff up and hey you just gotta learn from it and stuff but it isn't it is it's not fun <laughs> no it's not what was the inspiration behind your business name so, one, I want it to be unique. I didn't want it to just be called like something soap and co. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be different. I wanted people to know that I was a Christian. I wanted people to know that I was black. And I wanted, you know, people to know that it was a handmade product. Mm -hmm. So, my husband actually came up with the name Black Hands. But um, I found a scripture, it's Ecclesiastes 9, chapter 9, verse 10, that says, Whatever your hands find to do, do it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, my hands, because I wanted to eventually branch out, not just soap, but sugar scrubs, um, bath bombs, all that stuff, even candles, maybe in the later, 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 <laughs> candles are a different thing, so a later, later future. But I wanted to be able to say, you know, that my hands made all these mm -hmm. things and they're healthy for your skin. Yeah. And so I figured the black hands goes with the fact that I'm black. The scripture goes with the fact that I'm Christian, and then the hands go with the fact that it's handcrafted. With that, uh, that name, like you can 
even if you decided you wanted to move on to just making candles or something like that, you could right. still have some versatility with the name. Correct. It is nice that it's something unique to you and nobody right. else. Yeah, I got the LLC that. on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one thing with business names. You look for them and you look on that trademark yeah. thing and it's gone. And oh, well. <laughs> Right, yep, yep. Because I originally I was called Black I think it was black hand, just like one hand, not mm -hmm. plural, and that was taken. So I had to do the black hands, which I said makes more sense because obviously I have two hands. <laughs> but um, yeah, black hand was already taken in Florida, and even black hands was taken as well. So my LLC is Black Hands Ventures and Enterprises. I had to add the Ventures and Enterprises because black hands by itself was taken. And another thing I liked about it, which I didn't know before, but um, my husband was like, one of the reasons why he thought of black hands is because when you're in business models and if you know someone says you're in the black, that means that you're profitable. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to speak profitability over my business. So again, the black hands has so many different meanings, but the core was it. The core was the fact that I was Christian, the fact that I was black, and the fact that it was handcrafted. I'm going to mix this to about a light trace and then we'll add the indigo and keep mixing with the salt. So. Where did you get your um, containers from? Like this? Some off of Amazon and then some from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has, they're like really cheap and they hold up. So yeah. that's all that matters. What made you want to start YouTube? I had already been trying to do like lifestyle content mm -hmm. on YouTube. And I think it's because a lot of people on YouTube hyped up, get on YouTube, make yeah. passive income. There's always the passive income <laughs> conversations. So I said, well, I want to do this too. So I decided to get on. And at first, I wasn't taking it very seriously at all because in my head, I was going to post one video and go viral. Because isn't that what everybody thinks? I have been getting a steady growth, and I think it makes me appreciate the process mm -hmm. more because it, it comes over time. It's not something quick. But I've enjoyed it, and plus I think it's nice to document it because I have a six-year-old and she loves the fact that I make soap. It's like I'm her superwoman because I make soap. So it'd be nice for her to be able to go back and look at those videos of how her mom was making soap when she was young. And then she can take over the business. Yeah. That's what she wants to do. Oh, we're getting traced there. Yeah, so let's go ahead and add the salt. Blend with the salt, or you just, I mean, I guess you can't really do that. Normally, oh. <laughs> Normally, we do. Normally, salt bars are salt bars, they they don't take that long. I've seen some people, like when I first made our first salt bar, I was like super nervous because I thought it was gonna do this. And it didn't. <laughs> we might have just been talking way too much. Yeah. We're getting it in there. They look yummy. <laughs> they really do. They smell yummy too. Yes. I'm probably going to have to beat, beat them out on it to make sure that there's no um, yeah. bubbles or pocket holes. Yeah, we made a slab of one of our soaps one time and it went really fast and we got most of it in there but there were a few bars that had like craters in them. I've seen people like cure that though with adding um like some like this extra soap that they have left over somewhere. Yeah. Taking that and just filling in the holes. Although like when I go to the farmer's market and I see the soap bars, some of them still have it. They don't try to Yeah you know, get rid of them. Which I'm like, that's okay, because it's, it's just natural. Yeah. Some people, especially at markets, they appreciate more the recipe and the rather than colors and scents. And right. Like, that's what I like at markets. We try to, especially at markets, trying to offer things that are unscented. And you'd be surprised at the amount of people who are like, I can't use certain things because they make my head hurt. Right, yeah. Like the, the allergies. And these are nice, like, I got they like mini loaf bread. Yeah. Um, they're from Walmart and they're mini loaf. Mold. My Walmart doesn't have these, but 
I like the size of these. We'll have to do some more cleaning up and I'll finish up the questions. What was your experience making your first YouTube video? It was long. It took me a long time because first I started recording and I didn't like the way my, vo my voice sound. <laughs> That's why I started doing voiceovers because then I get to repeat myself over and over which takes a long time because I'm trying to get it perfect and you know a video that shouldn't take more than like maybe 15 20 minutes to actually speak over will take me like 45 minutes to an hour because I keep repeating things over because I'm like oh did I say that word right so I was very self-conscious when I first started but after doing so many of them I was just kind of like you get what you get this is me sometimes I don't enunciate words correctly sometimes you know I get nervous and you know I'll stutter a little bit or you know just 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 the normal stuff that comes along with like just being nervous making a video because even though I don't see anyone I know that someone's going to see it and of course it's like I want it to be perfect so I did it was a while before I even told like family and friends that I was on YouTube because I didn't want them going and saying why do you sound like that I was so like self-conscious of my voice so it wasn't the actual recording. The recording part was fine. Mm -hmm. It was just the me part that I was self-conscious with. I still like if my mom or something plays a video while I'm in the living room, I'm like, oh, don't, don't want to hear it. Because it's, well, also I do sit there and I edit it for a while. And by the time you sit there and you edit it, you film it and you kind of watch it over and over again, you're just like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Right, yeah, you just get like it. That's why I say like it is what it is. Like you got who I am and mm -hmm. what I did and I can't make it perfect. What is your favorite soap that you make? So I don't make it anymore because it just takes a lot of time. But I made this, I called it Red Royalty. I actually made it for my mother-in-law because she was having a red and gold 70th, 70th birthday party. And so she wanted me to make soap for her. So I mm -hmm. made it um, with dark red pigment and uh, King Goes Mica. And I did the soap frosting. Mm -hmm. And like that is just like another tutorial in and of itself. <laughs> and it just took so much time and I thought it was so beautiful afterwards that I didn't want to use it, but of course she used them, she mm -hmm. gave them away. And I just thought like, even though it was nice to make it and it was very pretty, it took a lot of time. Yeah. And I said, I don't think I have like the patience to do that on a regular basis. So it's more yeah. of a custom made type thing. That's one thing with like piping and different types of things to make embellishments and stuff. Yeah. And they're pretty, but they are hard. Yeah. And even when doing the embeds, because I've done the embeds, I did like a breast cancer awareness soap and I mm -hmm. did the embeds with melt and pour soap. You know, melt and pour gets a lot harder, a lot quicker than cold yeah. process. So I let my, I let the actual soap sit in the mold for two days with the melt and pour on it so when I went to cut it it was hard and I didn't want to break my new cutter so I ended up cutting it with a knife and then of course the bars aren't even because I'm not like that precise so I was a little frustrated with that so I said you know what from now on if I do do it in bed it's gonna have to be cold process but there, that requires a lot of pre-planning now that I've made a miss if you enjoy this video make sure to like and subscribe and go check out her channel we're also going to have another soap making video and we're going to chat and we're going to do the same thing on there but i'll be answering the questions so make sure to go like and subscribe to her channel and go check out her shop artisan soap by black hands is my shop i have a tiktok shop i have a separate website um, I have an Instagram, I have a YouTube, and I have a TikTok, so I have two TikToks, so I have my shop and I have my regular TikTok, but I'll provide all the, li the links so that they can be added in the description so you can check me out. Thank you for watching, and go check out her video. Thanks. Bye-bye.